Oh, by the way, uh, well, what is your uh, title? Like developer relations engineer. Okay, cool. cool, cool. For and I think we're live. Uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's so, right. hi guys. Uh, this is Chris from Dora Hacks. Uh, today is uh, very first uh, Moon River Hackathon workshop, and today uh, we are very happy to have Kevin from the Moonbin and Moon River. Uh, and he is the uh, developer relationship engineer uh, of the Moonbin. Uh, and he's going to share the introduction, uh, cover some topics about how Moonbin work uh, in general and some technical, uh, you know, te technical things from, from Moon, Moon River, Moonbin side that it, that is uh, important for DAFs, you know, to uh, understand more about the whole moving blockchain. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, uh, just uh, for a very general background introduction, uh, Moon River, this, this Moon River Hackathon is actually the first time that uh, Dora has to support the Moon River, which is our pleasure. And it is actually also the very first Moon River centric hackathon, which means that the users could use the Moon River token to actually vote and support for the projects that participate into the hackathon, uh, which is uh, super cool, I believe. Yeah, and we are really looking forward to see you know more and more uh, brilliant uh, projects that can emerge from this hackathon. Actually, we have already nearly twenty uh, projects right now already in the hackathon. So if you are a builder, if you want to build something on Moon River, please come and join us. We have a very uh, nice uh, you know, prize pool and also some uh, abundant resources from both Moon River and Dora Hack sites to support you guys. Yeah, so with, without, further, without further ado, let's welcome Kevin to start his workshop. Thank, thank you so much for the warm introduction. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Um, so we first met the Dora Hacks team back in Austin um, for an in-person hackathon, and uh, yeah, you you do a fantastic job, and uh, you know you have the novel funding mechanism with quadratic funding um, gets the community involved. Um, it's a lot of fun to go and vote, you know, on projects that you like. Um, and I know you were um, taking care of all of you know the ETH, ETH Denver, um, the virtual hackathon, and the in-person one, and managing all of that. Um, so we were thrilled to participate in uh, the ETH Denver one as well. That was a ton of fun. Um, so we're here today to uh, uh, talk about uh, bringing uh, native multi-chain applications uh, to Moon River. So this is meant to be an introductory workshop. Uh, I'm going to speak about uh, Polkadot and uh, Kusama, and then uh, give some background on Moonbeam and Moon River. And then we'll also speak about um, some of the bounties um, that we have in the hackathon. And we'll also speak about what makes Moon River such a great place to, to host a hackathon, right? What's unique about it? And uh, you know why are we so excited about the Moon River Dora uh, Grant Hackathon? Um, so I want to extend a huge shout out um, to all of the judges and all of the sponsors who made this hackathon possible. So um, the hackathon is sponsored by the Moonbeam Foundation, by Huobi Incubator, uh, and uh, organized you know, by Dora Hacks, and we're so grateful. Um, we have a wonderful combination of uh, judges. So these are professionals you know, from the industry. We have uh, Arrington XRP Capital, we have Covalent, Web3 Foundation, and Chainsafe. So they're all going to be helping out with judging of the judged bounties, um, in addition to Moonbeam Foundation and Huobi Incubator. So the judged bounties make up $100,000 of prizes. So that's two thirds of the total prize pool. And there's a $50,000 um, matching grant pool for the quadratic funding. So we'll go over um, that more a little bit later. Um, so before we introduce uh, Moonbeam and Moon River, um, it makes sense to first introduce um, Polkadot. And so, um, Polkadot, uh, the founders started working on Polkadot in about 2016. Um, and so one of the founders was Gavin Wood, who was also a co-founder of Ethereum. He wrote Solidity and he did much of the uh, technical development on the Ethereum platform. And so when um, he was starting Polkadot, uh, one of the things they were trying to, to do was to sort of um, you know, fix some of the problems that he maybe saw uh, in Ethereum, but then also um, to kind of build this multi-chain future, which uh, you know was not obvious at that point in 2016. Um, whereas now, you know, the multi-chain future is um, 
you know, pretty pretty obvious in, in 2016, it, it was not, right? And so the idea behind Polkadot is that we're moving away from a world of um, singular blockchains uh, where we try to do everything um, on one chain and we're moving towards a world of specialized blockchains um, where each chain specializes in uh, something. And then uh, if we can just find a way to, to connect these all um, in a way that's, you know, secure and scalable, um, we can have something that's you know truly greater than just the sum of the parts, and so the way Polkadot accomplishes that um, is through its architecture. And um, Polkadot is comprised at its uh, base layer uh, of a relay chain. So that's the layer zero, and the the relay chain um, is not a place where you deploy a contract. So you're not going to launch a game. Uh, you're not going to launch a uh, decentralized exchange, you know, on a layer zero, you would do that on a layer one. So the job of the relay chain is to handle kind of the base layer, the infrastructure, the networking, the coordination, um, security, all that, um, and especially handle um, the coordination and the management of which blockchains you get to, you know, run on top of it. So which parachains um, you know, get to run on top of the relay chain. And so Moonbeam is a parachain on Polkadot. So um, there are, you know, many other uh, parachains and uh, each of these parachains, you know, specialize in different things. So Moonbeam specializes in smart contracts. You could have parachains that specialize in privacy, in decentralized storage, uh, such as Crust, decentralized identity, um, all different sorts of specialties. Um, and what's you know unique about uh, Polkadot is that there's a way to connect all of these uh, chains to each other and also to the relay chain via XCM. And uh, this is you know native functionality. This is not um, like a bridging where we're we're crossing different mechanisms of consensus. This is happening all under the same uh, relay chain, which makes it very powerful and very secure. Um, and one of the benefits of Polkadot is that it's a model of shared security, which means that if you're launching a new parachain on Polkadot, you're launching a new layer one blockchain, um, typically a, a new proof of stake protocol, right? It's only as secure as the economic stake that's backing it up. So if you launch a new chain and let's say it's secured by, by $10 million of tokens, you can kind of put a price tag on what it would cost to attack the chain. But that's not the case in Polkadot because the security comes from the relay chain. And the economic um, security of the relay chain is much greater than any single uh, parachain. So that's very powerful. It creates this um, rising tide lifts all boats dynamic, um, as opposed to like a competition or a scarcity mindset where parachains uh, would be competing. Um, they don't have to compete for security resources. So that's extremely powerful. And so um, also let's uh, let's talk about what Moonbeam is. So Moonbeam is an Ethereum compatible smart contract platform on Polkadot. It's built with Substrate, which means that its underlying architecture is very different from that of Ethereum, but the end user experience um, is quite familiar and the developer experience um, is quite familiar as well. And so as an end user, you can be interacting with Moonbeam and you might not even uh, you know, notice any differences um, in terms of your, your experiences. So you can always um, switch networks um, in MetaMask very seamlessly. Um, and that is uh, very, very easy to do. And many dApps you know, that are on Moonbeam or Moonriver, they have like automatic network uh, recognition. So you don't even have to add the network to your MetaMask. You can just click approve and switch. So we're in a Ethereum compatible environment. Um, we seek to be as close as possible um, to Ethereum so that the, the developer experience, if you're an ETH dev and you're coming to deploy on Moonbeam, that that experience is as seamless as possible. So that involves making sure that you have all the tools that you're used to using. Uh, that involves making sure that we adopt you know, the same improvements that are made to Ethereum. So that includes EIP-1559 um, that went in recently um, you know, to Moonriver and Moonbeam. And um, you know, our goal is to make it so that we're the easiest uh, destination for uh, multi-chain applications to launch their dApps uh, and gain access to the Polkadot ecosystem. So that means that you don't have to change any of your Solidity code. It means that you don't have to change your front end. You might have to add uh, you know, Moonbeam or Moonriver as a, as a network visible in the front end, but you don't have to change your uh, back end. You don't have to change the type of requests that you make um, to a Moonbeam node. You could send the exact same request that you'd make to an Ethereum node, um, such as ETH.getBalance. You don't have to change the units. You don't have to change anything. 
And the Moonbeam node uh, will interpret that um, and it will get you back the response that you're looking for. Um, so all of this is you know, you know, creating a, a seamless um, developer experience um, and you know, a seamless uh, end user experience as well. So you'll you'll hear me uh, kind of interchangeably, kind of switching back and forth between Moonbeam and and Moon River. So I wanted to kind of clarify uh, the distinctions between the two. Um, so Polkadot is this uh, layer zero. Um, you know, it's a production mainnet, um, but there's also a network called Kusama. And I want to take you back in the history a little bit of Kusama. So uh, back in uh, you know the early days of, of Polkadot, Kusama was a test net, and then in 2020. Uh, control of the network was decentralized and it was kind of passed to token holders. And if you participated in the Polkadot launch, and so you owned uh, Polkadot tokens, uh, you were uh, granted, you know, like a, a specific amount of, of Kusama tokens. And, you know, at the time this was like a test net, right? But it became uh, apparent pretty quickly that Kusama was, was more valuable um, than just a test net, right? And why is this important? Because if you're launching a uh, you know, a new application. Um, you want to get your application, you know, in a in a real world environment um, before you move on to production. So, as a simple example, uh, let's say you're launching a, a new smart contract, and um, you know you're deploying it to a test net. Um, nobody's going to have an incentive to to attack that smart contract, right? Um, nobody's going to try to poke holes in it or really test it out until it moves on to to production. Um, so, the the sooner that you can get your code out into the real world. Um, the better. And so Kusama is a mainnet. And Kusama and Polkadot are kind of brother-sister networks. And so Moonbeam has taken that same approach. So Moonbeam and Moon River are sister networks. And Moon River is the name of the uh, Kusama uh, parachain. And then uh, Moonbeam is the name of the network um, that's on Polkadot. And so all of the uh, latest, um, I'll advance uh, to the next slide, but um, all of the latest uh, updates they roll out first to Moon River. You know, after they've been validated on internal test nets and the Moonbase Alpha test net, they move along to Moon River first. And this means that the latest um, protocol upgrades, um, such as when XCM is enabled on Kusama, um, that comes to Kusama first, and then it comes to to Moon River as well. So um, XCM uh, has been live on Moon River um, for quite some time now, and it's coming soon to uh, Moonbeam uh, as well. Um, it hasn't been enabled yet on Polkadot, but it will be um, very shortly. So as soon as it's enabled on Polkadot, um, then we'll incorporate that into into Moonbeam. But this kind of fits in really well with the ethos of a hackathon. Um, you know, a hackathon is meant to be experimental. It's meant to be where you're pushing the boundaries of what's possible. You're trying something new. You're experimenting and innovating. And so Moon River is the perfect fit for a hackathon. Um, another thing I want to mention is that the, uh, the Moon River network has one of the strongest communities that I've ever seen. Um, you know, the, the token holders are engaged and they're passionate. And they always want to try out new things. So if you're launching a new application, you can drop a link to it and explain what it is. You know, in our Discord, we have a specific channel that's just for um, dApps. And um, you'll find that people are willing to jump in, try it out. Um, they'll either be your first users or they'll provide feedback. You know, people want to, uh, you know, try out these projects and, and be part of the early community. Um, it's a lot of fun to do that too. So, um, you know, on the right, we have kind of the diagram of, uh, the Kusama network and showing that Moon River is a uh, layer one parachain that's on uh, Kusama. So it's a layer one um, blockchain. Um, and moving along, um, I wanted to share with you some network statistics. Now statistics, they don't tell the whole story, but they are part of the story. And so I wanted to share with you um, kind of what we've noticed since uh, Moonbeam's launch. Um, so Moonbeam launched in January of 2022. And since then, uh, there have been almost 5 million uh, transactions on the network, um, 237,000 um, wallets, and then 1,700 ERC-20 tokens created. Um, so these are pretty staggering numbers. And uh, Moon River has been around uh, for a bit longer. So Moon River's numbers are even greater. Moon River launched in August of 2021, um, and it's seen uh, over 17 million transactions, over half a million wallets, and 4,700 ERC-20 tokens that have been created. You can create your own ERC-20 token 
You can do it right after um, this uh, presentation if you'd like. Uh, it's very easy. You can use uh, Open Zeppelin Wizard. We have a tutorial um, on YouTube um, showing you how you can launch you know, your own ERC20 token. So that could be uh, quite fun and also a good way um, you know, to get started um, deploying and uh, you know, playing around either with uh, Moon River or if you uh, preferred, you could try out you know, the Moonbase Alpha testnet. So as I mentioned, uh, Moon River provides a full EVM that's 100% um, compatible uh, with Ethereum. So you don't have to change your Solidity code at all. Um, and we also have a fully compatible Web3 RPC. That's what enables you to send requests that are uh, written identically to ones that you'd send to an Ethereum node. Um, but we're much more than the EVM as well. Because we are part of the Polkadot ecosystem, um, that opens up a whole real realm of uh, other possibilities. So that includes XCM, which um, is incredibly powerful. And uh, it includes some applications you know, that we haven't thought of yet. Uh, but kind of the first ones that are being tested are these cross-chain um, scenarios. So as an example, if you have Kusama, you have the native token of the Kusama network, which is KSM. That's a substrate um, asset. Um, so it's not um, natively uh, Ethereum compatible or anything like that. But uh, the Moonbeam team has launched um, an asset called an XC20. Um, and that is a substrate native asset that's compatible uh, with ERC uh, 20 standards. So that means you can take your native KSM and you can bring it over to Moon River as an XC20. You can put it into DeFi. You can uh, yield farm with it. You can do all sorts of uh, staking. You can do all sorts of cool things. Um, and then whenever you feel like it at some point in the future, you can convert it right back to that native KSM. So you have that possibility. And this is all happening under the same uh, relay chain. So the security guarantees here are incredibly strong. And it's all like one unified system, which is very, very powerful. So there's much more to talk about with XCM. We have uh, a couple of different workshops that we've actually done on XCM. Um, so I don't want to go into too much detail here. Um, but I also want to mention that uh, Moonbeam and Moon River have native on-chain governance um, because they're part of the .sama ecosystem. .sama is just... Uh, a combination between you know Polkadot and Kusama to kind of uh, refer to to both um, in kind of the same ecosystem. So this on-chain governance is is critical for blockchains to evolve because when you think about kind of the old model of governance, the old model of blockchain governance is make a presentation um, at a conference, uh, maybe make a couple of Twitter posts, uh, maybe do a straw poll. Um, with a little bit of turnout. And then if the results look good, um, you know, code up a change, uh, deploy, or um, you know, write the code, test the code, merge it in, um, release it. Okay, now it's ready to go. But then you're still at uh, the the whim of the of the miners, right? In a in a in a proof of work system, right? That is not the case in uh, the Polkadot ecosystem, and that's not the case in Moon River or Moonbeam. So we have what's called forkless upgrades. And any upgrades to the protocol are actually voted on in democracy. And so if the community disagrees with the change, then that change um, does not get enacted. If the community votes for a change um, and it's approved, then the actual um, the decision is binding to the outcome. And what that means is that um, if the uh, decision you know, is approved and it goes through, then that upgrade is applied to the protocol automatically. Nobody has to upgrade their client. Um, we're not, this is not subject to, um, you know, node operators deciding to, to update their node or not. This happens in an on-chain manner at a scheduled block in time, and it happens autonomously. So that's incredibly powerful, and it's a revolutionary, uh, you know, technology. And we're also, we're a proof-of-stake protocol. We don't burn the poles or melt the poles. Um, we're extremely uh, energy efficient um, in, our, in our implementation, and uh, and that's extremely important. So um, again, we we are the easiest on-ramp uh, to the Polkadot ecosystem. And for Moon River, we're the easiest on-ramp to the Kusama ecosystem. So um, when teams are deploying uh, multi-chain deployments, right, they are uh, they want to gain access to you know Polkadot and Kusama. And uh, you know, we're the easiest way for them to do that. Uh, so I want to uh, talk a little bit about um, composability for a second. Um, and when, when we're bootstrapping a new network, right, we kind of have, 
I would call them kind of like layers of integrations and uh, application deployments um, that happen. So, so straight out of the box, um, Moon River and Moonbeam um, are compatible with uh, integrations like uh, Truffle and integrations like Hardhat. Um, no changes really need to be made. And same thing with MetaMask and things like that. But we also have uh, integrations like Etherscan, um, which, you know, that does involve like uh, uh, a decent amount of like uh, development work by, by the Etherscan team. So those integrations are important, you know, for users and, uh, you know, DeFi power users and, you know, regular users. Uh, that's very important that they have these, these tools available. And so uh, once we have kind of this, this build out of the initial tool set, um, then we start to have, you know, applications deployed. Um, we start to have decentralized exchanges deployed, um, Sushi, uh, Moonwell, a lending and borrowing protocol. And uh, Moonwell is dependent upon Chainlink. And, you know, Chainlink um, deployed to Moon River uh, back last year. And Chainlink is deploying to Moonbeam uh, at the end of April, I believe. Um, but, you know, Chainlink was a, an absolute requirement for, for Moonwell to be able to deploy. And so uh, after you have you know, these uh, core uh, applications, right? Lending and borrowing, you have uh, decentralized uh, exchange trading. Um, then I would start to, you know, be interested in kind of these uh, second order uh, applications and integrations. And what I, what I mean by that is um, applications that are tapping into the functionality that's already deployed. So that could be a, uh, a DEX aggregator. It could be, um, you know, um, auto compounders, it could be um, things like that where you're going and you're building on top of the tools and the applications that are already there. So you're enhancing the user experience. You're saying, hey, there's a lot here um, and I think I can tweak it and I can make it a little bit better and I can enhance, you know, the end user experience. Um, so instead of, if you want to give, you know, the user like uh, the best trade possible, instead of them going and checking a couple different um, exchanges, you can do that all in one place. And so there's definitely a lot of opportunity there for you to do that. And that's enabled by the composability of the ecosystem, um, as well as all the tools um, that are already you know, available and deployed um, for you to be able to, to work with. Um, so next thing I want to do is I want to take a look at the, uh, the Moonbeam ecosystem and the Polkadot ecosystem and kind of take a step back. And um, um, this first slide here, there's a lot going on here. Um, so there are a huge amount of projects that are uh, deployed to Moonbeam that are involved in the uh, Moonbeam and Moon River ecosystems, um, you know, ranging from, you know, DeFi applications to professional um, node operators. And I want to highlight that because it's important, right? So if you're launching a new NFT project and uh, you have a very hyped release, you could, uh, I would say, call up, but maybe people aren't calling up. Uh, you know, maybe we're, we're sending emails, but you could go to one of these node operators uh, such as on finality or beware. And you could say, Hey, I need 20 dedicated RPC endpoints. I'm doing this huge NFT drop. I think I'm going to have a ton of traffic and I'd like you to stand up, you know, 20 uh, RPC nodes that, that are just for my application. And that's possible. Um, these professional, you know, node operators can do that. Now you're more than welcome to, you know, run your own uh, RPC nodes, but if you're in the midst of a release, right, you don't want to have to worry about the, the maintenance and the infrastructure aspect. Um, and so all of these um, components are available for you, uh, you know, that make it possible for you to do uh, these types of releases. So um, another example is that if you're a team that's moving, you know, uh, making a deployment on Moon River or Moonbeam, and you have some assets that you need to keep track of, um, you might not be satisfied with keeping those assets in MetaMask, even though we're compatible with Ledger and Trezor uh, natively, you might need a multi-sig wallet. And so we developed uh, a, uh, a Moonbeam safe, which is a friendly fork of Gnosis safe. And it's one of the, you know, Gnosis safe is one of the easiest um, multi-sig wallets to use. So you can specify any combination of um, you know, signatories uh, on a on an on an account. You can have like a like a one of three or a three of five or a you know five of ten. Any type of multi sig that you'd like, and it's dynamic. So it's not something where you just set it and that is uh, set forever. You can add and remove owners um, as you please. And so having these types of integrations 
um, are absolutely key, you know, for making it possible for for teams to to come and to deploy um, to Moonbeam. And uh, you know, I just mentioned, you know, two. Right? There's a, a whole host of these types of integrations. You have API and infrastructure. Um, you have gasless transactions through Biconomy. You have um, subquery, uh, which indexes both EVM and substrate. Um, you have Etherscan. We have all these different things and uh, too many, you know, to talk about right now. Um, but just demonstrating, you know, the uh, expanse of the ecosystem. Um, next, I want to talk about why the uh, Polkadot ecosystem, you know, was chosen. Why? Why Polkadot? Um, and so to illustrate this, I want to show you a uh, some statistics that were were gathered by a uh, a firm called Electric Capital, and Electric Capital saw that Polkadot was the fastest growing um, Layer One developer platform uh, between the end of 2019 and 2020, um, and it was growing significantly faster than Ethereum. Uh, and what they did uh, in the graph on the right is they took um, the developer growth for Ethereum since its launch, and then they overlaid the developer growth of Polkadot since Polkadot's launch period. And they found that Polkadot is growing faster than Ethereum was um, at these respective points in time. So this is very, very interesting. And uh, these are the type of statistics that you want to see um, you know, when you're getting involved in a new ecosystem. Um, moving on to uh, Moon River. Um, Moon River uh, appeared in the Electric Capital report uh, that came out at the end of last year. And Moon River launched in August of 2021. That is to say that over half the year had already passed. And Moon River still made it in the top 10 um, fastest growing ecosystems as measured by full-time monthly developers. So we're very excited to see this again at the end of next year and see where we land. Um, the second uh, piece of information uh, here on this page is that EVM uh, compatible chains are growing faster than Ethereum. This is really, really uh, incredible. And you know, we're not saying this to kind of uh, advertise Moonbeam or Moon River. We're saying that when you're launching your application, right, you want to be on a rocket ship. You want to be uh, in an ecosystem that's growing rapidly so that when you're launching, you're attracting users you're attracting uh, interest and you're attracting you know, attention from all areas in the ecosystem. And so um, Moon River and Moonbeam are extremely uh, powerful and extremely uh, attractive places to deploy your application. I next want to talk about um, hackathon bounties. Um, so we have uh, a couple different bounties and um, all these bounties, again, are made possible by the Moonbeam Foundation, by Huobi Incubator, and or Hacks. We have a total of $150,000 in total prizes. So that would be um, $100,000 in judged bounties. So the judged bounties um, are the ones that we'll be talking about um, on the next few slides. And then the quadratic funding aspect, um, the way that works is um, you have a $50,000 uh, matching pool. And those funds get applied to the uh, projects. They can be based on anything. They don't have to submit to any specific bounty. Um, but they will collect um, community votes. And the way that works is that a, a vote costs uh, 0.01 a mover. Um, so it's about 50 cents or so. And you can vote um, on any project that you'd like. So your first vote is uh, you know, that 0.01 mover. And then each additional vote um, that you want to make um, does increase in cost and it increases um, exponentially so that if you want to apply uh, 10 votes to a specific project um, that would cost more um, than just a 0.1 mover it would uh, increase um, quite a lot um, so it rewards you know the teams that have the most uh, decentralized um, and broad community turnout so if a bunch of people um, vote for this project um, and they don't have to submit that many votes individually they can each submit like one vote then they'll do very very well in the quadratic funding so just a warning, um, DoorHax does have very sophisticated um, anti-cheating mechanisms. So uh, don't think that you can just like send funds to a different address and then kind of like vote one time from, from many different addresses. That will be, um, that'll be detected and then those votes will be thrown out. So um, moving on to the, uh, the bounties. The, the first one and the grand prize one that we have has to do with XCM. And XCM is, uh, 
we have a workshop on it. It's a, it's a very, very powerful, um, it stands for cross consensus messaging, and it is absolutely the future of Moonbeam and the future of the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, it's very, very foundational. Um, and it's a, it's a differentiating, you know, technology of, you know, the Polkadot and, and Kusama ecosystems. And as well as um, a differentiating aspect of Moon River and Moonbeam, um, because you know it depends on on our ability to to uh, build these integrations, uh, you know, build out these these XCM integrations. So um, the grand prize is twenty thousand dollars, and the second place prize um, is five thousand dollars. So these are huge reward amounts. So we want to you know encourage people to work on the XCM grand prize. It is the most difficult one for sure, um, but Again, we have these workshops. We have plenty of places um, to get help. So allow me to first just explain the challenge a bit. Let's say you're making uh, an XCM cross-chain transfer. So as an example, let's say that you're uh, sending Kusama, uh, you're sending KSM from the Kusama relay chain to Moon River. Um, that's an example. There are many other you know, cross-chain uh, transfer scenarios um, that, you could, that you could create, but... Um, it's not always obvious to the end user um, where their asset is at any given time. Now you could say, well, you could look at your, you know, origin uh, chain and your origin account, and you could look at the destination chain, and you can kind of deduce, you know, where the funds have gone. But you know, we want to make the experience seamless, right, for the end user. And so, if we can do that, if we can allow a user to search for transactions um, by an Ethereum transaction hash or by a substrate transaction hash. Um, that could improve the end user experience. And if you can say, um, you could detect actually, you know, based on, on the transaction hash, you could detect, hey, yes, this was an XCM transaction or no, it wasn't an XCM transaction. You know, go look it up on a standard moon scan or another um, blockchain explorer. If it was an XCM uh, transaction, then you could display um, the status of it, you know, and you could display the, the destination, you know, where it was transferred from. So the origin chain, the destination chain, you can show the amount that was transferred. Now, typically with XCM transfers, um, you do have to pay a tiny, tiny bit of execution fees. So if you're transferring, you know, 1.2 KSM from the Kusama relay chain to Moon River, um, you're transferring 1.2, you might end up with 1.999 on, uh, Moon River, and so it'd be helpful, you know, to display that um, to the user. Um, again, this is all to to enhance, you know, the end user experience. So showing uh, the user's balances and locations of assets in a unified explorer is very, very valuable. And we can help you in our Discord, uh, in office hours um, that we'll be hosting. Um, we will absolutely help you um, with this. And you know, we encourage you to check out all of the, you know, workshops that we've done. Um, Alberto did one uh, for the Moon Builders workshop in February, and he also did one uh, at the beginning of April uh, with the subquery team. Um, so the subquery team is the um, they're an indexing um, solution, uh, but the distinction with them is that they they index both the Ethereum side and the substrate side. Um, so that's important because um, this would help you uh, more easily, you know, build a, a cross-chain explorer. You don't have to use a subquery, but it's definitely something you know, to explore, it could be very useful. Next, we have some NFT bounties. And the NFT bounties um, are really fun and uh, interesting. So I have this slide as an example to show kind of the, the current state of showing off my NFTs. So I, uh, I'm an NFT collector and I have, uh, you know, too many uh, accounts and too many NFTs, you know, I'm embarrassed to admit. Um, one of these accounts uh, I'm showing here, and this account is on uh, Moon River. Uh, I mean, this is the you know showing off you know the the Moon River account, and that is um, on the left. You can see. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, collecting is only part of the fun, right? I want to show off my NFTs. That's that's part of the fun. Is after I've you know collected them, I want to show them off to to others. And if I just share my address with somebody. I say, hey, go look at my NFTs here. Um, the first thing I usually do when I get somebody's address is I go and look it up in a blockchain explorer. And if you look up, you know, my address in Moonscan, you can see the ERC721 tokens that I own. Um, you can see how many. You can see basic uh, information like the, the transfer date, when I received it, things like that. 
Um, but you can't see the artwork. You can't see the the metadata, or you can't see you know the rarity and information like that. Um, so that's that's not great, right? I want to show off uh, my NFTs. That's that's the whole fun of it. So then you could move on to something like NF Trade, and NF Trade is a fantastic marketplace for buying, selling, um, putting up your NFTs, you know, for sale, um, for swapping them. You can do all sorts of things, and it's an extremely powerful marketplace. But it may not be the best place to show off your NFTs. So as an example, I'm trying to. Um, this is what what happens when you look up my address on uh, NF Trade. You'll see um, my first Seascape NFT, which was used in a game. Um, it does have some image uh, data associated with it, um, but it's not visible here on NF Trade. Moon Ninjas is, which is awesome. Um, the image is visible there, and then uh, my Black Snake uh, is not visible. So this is kind of like a disjoint experience, right? Um, I want to be able to share my NFTs um, in a way that's seamless, um, but I'm not able to do that right now at the moment. So the first challenge is to build an NFT showcase DAP. And the idea for this is to build an app that allows users to showcase their NFTs on Moon River and to support as many collections as possible. Um, the first, uh, the first place prize for this is $7,000, and there is a second place prize of $2,500 um, for this. So this is a very fun and, uh, you know, definitely a bounty to consider. Um, it would be helpful if you could also provide, you know, relevant metadata such as rarity, such as total supply, um, the exact token ID, and things like that. And I also highly suggest being able to provide uh, a user-friendly link to show off your wallet. Um, so instead of um, you know, users' accounts you know, being visible at something like uh, mynfts.com slash address slash you know, 0x blah, 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 um, have it be like a username that the user can set, and then they can share this, um, which is very easy to remember, and they can share it with their friends. OK, the next one uh, is also NFT focused. And this is a creation and deployment dApp. Um, and it also has a first place prize of $7,000 and a second place prize of $2,500. So the idea here is to build a UI and an app that allows non-technical users to create and deploy NFTs. So um, the users should be able to upload uh, image files for each NFT, and they can specialize or uh, specify um, various different characteristics, such as rarity and things like that. Um, so keep in mind that. Um, you know, this may be the first time, you know, that these users are interacting with NFTs. So you want to make the process, you know, as seamless um, as possible, make it as easy um, and as seamless as possible. And the last consideration is that it would be great if you have a transfer functionality. Um, so a lot of times when people are creating a bunch of NFTs, right, they're not all for themselves. They want to give them to friends or they're uh, such as like a proof of attendance, right? They want to give them out to people um, who attended or took part in something. And it may not be the easiest um, you know, experience for a new user to be able to, let's say they mint them all and they, they're they the owner of all these NFTs and now they need to transfer them um, to specific users. Um, now, maybe they wanna send them off, You know, maybe they, they mint them and they send them off right away, or maybe they kind of hold on to these NFTs uh, after minting them and they wanna transfer them later. So if you could have this transfer functionality that allows them to transfer them via you know, the UI, um, that would be quite beneficial. Okay, so the next bounty is a indexers focused bounty. Um, so indexers simplify the process of gathering blockchain data. So I already mentioned subquery was an indexer, um, but there's also covalent and there's also the graph and there's others as well. Um, you don't have to use any particular one. Um, but as an example of what they do is the way um, ERC20s are set up, right? is that if you want to get a, let's say you want to get a user's balance of all the NFTs that they own, you would have to submit a request uh, to a node um, on the network for each individual ERC20 token. You could say, what's their balance of USDT? What's their balance of USDC? What's their balance of wrapped Ethereum? And so on and so forth. Now, we mentioned that there are over 4,000 ERC20 tokens on Moon River. There are over 1,700 ERC20s on Moonbeam. Um, you don't want to have to be making all these requests yourself. Instead, Covalent can do it for you. And they can organize this um, into one single unified API. So all you have to do is make a single request uh, providing you know, a user account. You can say, 
what's their balance of ERC20 tokens? Like what ERC20 tokens do they have and what's the balance for each one that has a non-zero balance? And Covalent will you know, maintain a list of all of the ERC20 tokens on the blockchain and they'll be constantly updating and refreshing that list so that when you, uh, you know, query using Covalent, um, you can get up-to-date information. So that's extremely powerful. You, um, you don't have to use, again, you don't have to use any specific um, indexer, but kind of the main requirement here is that the indexer provide a key piece of data in your application. So don't try to, you know, um, build something that's totally separate. And then, you know, in the last, um, you know, settings page of your app, you get, you know, a piece of information that you don't really need at all. Um, it has to be providing a useful, you know, functionality to your application. But there's a lot of freedom and flexibility here for, for what you like to do. Okay, the next bounty is to launch a game on Moon River. The first place prize is $7,000 and the second place prize is $2,500. And this bounty was inspired by Chainsafe's new um, open source gaming SDK. And this gaming SDK makes it easy to integrate um, blockchain data into Unity. So Unity, um, as you may know, is a, a very powerful gaming engine. It's been around for, for yeah, a long time and it's quite common, um, but now you can finally get blockchain data um, into Unity. So as an example, um, if you wanted to track a user's uh, NFTs and maybe that adjusts uh, behavior in the game, um, that's just a simple example, um, but there are many different things uh, that you can do. And we're in the process of scheduling a workshop uh, with Chainsafe to show off their uh, gaming SDK and show you more about how it works. And there's also a huge um, series of YouTube tutorials uh, that Chainsafe has made. Each of the videos are like three or four minutes long. So it's very easy to watch. And I think there's like 20 or 30 of them. So you can get bite-sized you know, pieces of information about each aspect of the Chainsafe Gaming SDK. So I highly recommend that you check that out um, if you're curious about it. We also have some challenges. Um, we're calling these you know, the, the Huobi Incubator Challenges uh, the best overall submissions. So um, our kind of mission in crafting these bounties has been to provide bounties that are interesting and relevant and challenging, but also open-ended enough such that if you're working on something, you know, that doesn't quite fit into the bounties, there are bounties for you to apply for. Um, so these uh, Huobi Incubator uh, best overall submissions can be whether you're submitting to another bounty, that's fine, or whether you're not submitting to another bounty, that's just fine as well. We have first, second, and third place prizes. And... Um, these bounties uh, you know, are stackable. So you can apply for the covalent indexers bounty and you can also be eligible you know, for um, this one as well. And that applies for the other ones um, as well. And we also have uh, two Huobi Incubator Moonshot bounties. These are two awards of $10,000 each. And these are designed for if you're working on something that doesn't fit into the other bounty categories. So these are not stackable with other bounties. Um, other than the, um, you know, the Huobi uh, best uh, overall. Um, they're not stackable with the, you know, the other, uh, like the gaming ones and the NFT focused ones. So if you're working on something that is uh, different and doesn't fit in, you know, to the other bounty categories, but, you know, is interesting and very, very cool, then this is the bounty uh, for you. Um, so we have a hackathon site on doorhacks.io. Um, you can scan the QR code here or you can go to doorhacks.io slash grant slash Moon River. You can see um, all of the projects that have already been submitted there. You can submit your um, hackathon builds there. And there is a guide um, on the website showing you how you can submit um, your build. And uh, yeah, it's very easy to, to do so. And I highly recommend that you check it out. So if you're on the fence, if you're not sure if you wanna participate, if maybe you don't have a fully built out project just yet, well, one, you still have plenty of time. Um, you have until May 20th. So there is plenty of time to get your submission in. But I'd highly recommend, you know, if this is your first hackathon uh, or your second, if you're unsure, go ahead and apply. Why not? Um, go ahead and, and get those submissions in and uh, see what happens. You might, uh, you might win. Um, I also want to encourage you to stay in touch. We have a Discord. So that's uh, discord.gg slash moonbeam. We have a specific um, hackathon focused channel where um, we have links to all the different events that are going on. And we've done several different workshops over the past month. And so all of those uh, workshops are listed there in the Discord. And we're also gonna be announcing office hours um, to come and discuss your project or get help on anything 
Uh, we'll be announcing those very, very soon. So the Discord is kind of the best place to, to get in touch with us. Um, we also have um, a beautiful website. Um, so that's moonbeam.network. And if you go to docs.moonbeam.network, you can see all of our um, technical documentation and tutorials and guides there. Um, and you can also stay in touch with us on Twitter uh, at Moonbeam Network. And we also have a Moon River um, Network Twitter as well. So you can see all of our links. I believe this is a link tree if you scan that. So you should be able to see um, all of ours. And uh, that wraps it up. Um, that wraps it up. Uh, Chris, with the uh, you know the presentation, and I'm ready to take uh, you know any any questions that we that we may have. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, first of all, want to thanks for Kevin's uh, beautiful workshop. Uh, pretty much cover most of the important things that need to be noticed by the devs uh, sites. Because uh, uh, you 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 could all see that there are uh, lots of uh, you know bounties and lots of sectors and directions that Moon River uh, want to what want devs and teams to be focused on. Uh, this is super helpful actually, especially for early stage projects. Because usually uh, we notice that uh, some of the uh, you know teams they they have actually very solid tech technology. They have uh, they, they they can build pretty well, but sometimes uh, they could be um, you know miss the directions especially when they're trying to build a very early stage project. So Moon River uh, has provided very detailed and well-structured uh, instructions and guides uh, for our devs to, you know, building on Moon River network, which is great. <clears throat> yeah, um, so uh, let me check uh, if there are some questions. Um... Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So I don't. I don't see uh, much questions pop up from the chat room, but I think uh, I can came up with one. So uh, you you just you, you just mentioned about the the the, the Polkadot choice uh, because you know the the right now the Polkadot uh, blockchain is actually one of the fastest growing DApps active users uh, blockchain right now, uh, which is even faster than Ethereum, uh, but uh, one because uh, because right now the, the the cosmos is also trying to build the similar stuff just like a polka dot, which is like the layer zero and you know uh, building the uh, specific uh, layer one for focus on the specific area. So just wondering, uh, what do you like? What do you think um, uh, to build? What what is the advantage for projects to build on the Pocket ecosystem or Moon River ecosystem compared with the similar uh, blockchain on Cosmos? Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. So there's, uh, I think there's three chains that are um, like looking at uh, three ecosystems like uh, Polkadot, Cosmos, and Avalanche that are trying to do like the um, kind of like layer zero approach, right? And, you know, at, at various um, stages, of development, I think uh, the Polkadot ecosystem is probably the, the furthest along um, in this kind of like layer zero um, race. Um, but you know, the, the future is is multi chain, right? So teams might might choose to deploy to to all these different ec ecosystems, right? Um, they want to gain access to Polkadot. They want to gain access to Cosmos. Um, and so you know, that's something that we you know we believe that the future is is multi chain. And you know, our goal at at Moonbeam and Moon River is to be you know the um, the easiest place for um, you know Ethereum-based uh, applications to be able to launch and and gain access to to Polkadot. Um, yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, so I I see more questions. So uh, oh. one one for our audience. I have no not built on any of uh, this blockchain and pl pl platform before. What what it? So where where is the best place to get started? Or uh, are there is there any you know example projects that uh, they can learn and play with? Oh, absolutely. So uh, the best place to check <laughs> is docs.moonbeam.network. Um, we've got tons of tutorials there, um, which uh, you know take you through step by step. Um, if you're like a visual learner, so if you prefer YouTube tutorials, um, we've got lots of of those as well. So um, that would be on YouTube uh, Moonbeam Network. Um, 
And so a lot of those, you know, they, we kind of have guides for both, right? We have like, like a written one and there's a bunch of different things that you can, you can go through. Um, one would be uh, deploying an ERC-20, right? And the fastest way to do that is with Open Zeppelin Wizard. So Open Zeppelin Wizard will allow you to edit your own ERC-20 or ERC-721 um, or other types of token contracts. You can tweak all the parameters that you'd like. And there's an export button, which will allow you to export that into Remix. And you can launch that straight to Moon River or Moonbase Alpha Testnet. Um, but yeah, that's just that's just one example. Um, there's many different you know tools that that you can use um, if you'd prefer you know to use like, like Truffle or or Hard Hat. Um, that can be very useful um, as like you know um, like a framework for for building. Um, but yeah, there's there's tons of tutorials um, that are on our doc site. It's um, docs.moonbeam.network, and uh, if you have like any questions or anything on this, um, we can absolutely provide help in our Discord, um, which is discord.gg slash moonbeam. Cool. Yeah. And another is uh, if uh, they're going to they're gonna build something on Moon River Network, we'll be able to uh, port it or re redeploy it on Moonbeam uh, uh, without uh, modification or much uh, modifications. Absolutely. This is a fantastic question. Um, <laughs> yes, you can deploy to Moonbeam, you know, without uh, without any changes. Your um, Solidity, you know, smart contract can be, you know, exactly the same. And so the the considerations they really come down to like what um, is in the best interest of you know your community and your project and and your application. So for some teams, um, they may say, you know, we're going to uh, deploy to both chains. Um, we're going to deploy to both Moonbeam and Moon River. Um, other ones. Uh, particularly like NFT projects, you know, have a strong following, you know, early on on Moon River. Um, but there's other ones that are launching on Moonbeam, and um, also for you know for decentralized exchanges or for uh, you know different types of DeFi applications, they might pick and choose uh, Moonbeam, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, there's it's uh, it's up to the you know the uh, the project and the and the community to decide. Awesome, awesome, yeah. Uh... I think I don't. I don't think I, I. I personally, I don't have more questions. And uh, if there is no more questions from the audience, oh yeah, actually, there is another one. How long have you been apart from of the team, Kevin? <laughs> sure, uh, great question. Uh, I've been at Moonbeam for one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope that answered. Cool. Yeah. So uh, if there is no more questions pop up, uh, I think we could end it up. End it up here. Uh, and I think this workshop is being super helpful for all the, da all the devs and teams that want to participate into the hackathon and want to know more about the Moon River blockchain. Uh, for yeah, it, it's it, it is just super helpful and really appreciate Kevin's time and contribution uh, for this workshop. And uh, if uh, you have any questions, just like Kevin said, please feel free to. Go to Moon River Moonbeam's uh, socials, engage with the team. I believe they are more than happy to, you know, uh, answer any any types of the questions from your sites and trying to engage with you guys. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it, and please make sure that you you can follow the both Moon River Moon River and Drahak's, uh socials, uh, so you won't miss out any of the events about the Moon River Hackathon in the future. Uh, it's a two month hackathon and going to end it up in the middle of the May. Um, you still have a pl plenty of time to, you know, apply and learn to and building something exciting on Moon River blockchain. Uh, and we are really looking forward to see that you guys can join us and, you know, let's party, party it up. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and I think we can end it up here. Uh, thanks for listening and hope you guys all have a great one. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Chris. Thank you, Kevin.